Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Rainy again here in Charlotte. It is May 27th, 2020, and I'm going to begin by reading Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, as folks get settled in. This is Matthew 3, starting at verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the, the region about the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. That's our passage for today's daily devotion. I want to say hello to everybody who has joined us. Hey, Dawn and Meredith and Norma and Karen, James and Ron and Jan and Linda and Marie. And uh, it's good to see everybody. Becky Doolin. Thank you guys for taking a break during your rainy Wednesday and joining us. It is Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Uh, it's time for our daily devotion, and at the end, I'll share our plan for how we're going to come back together. The board met last night and uh, prayerfully discussed how we should come back together in person, and we've got a plan, and I'm going to share it with you here at the end of our devotion, and then it's going to be posted everywhere on the website and uh, in writing, because I know there'll be probably some questions. But first, I want to share God's Word with you from Matthew chapter 3. And uh, greet those who've joined in, Linda and Donna. Hello to you guys. Glad you're with us. I want to read it again. I did read it at the very beginning, but most folks hadn't joined yet. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, there's lots of stuff that... Uh, you could isolate and study and think about in this passage. Starts off in those days. It doesn't say how long, but this is a, a jump forward in the timeline from what we've been studying in Matthew. Decades forward because John is Jesus's cousin and they were born not too far apart from the same time of each other. And uh, it seems they're both adults now. So we've jumped forward in the timeline. Um, John is out in the wilderness preaching and baptizing. The wilderness has a lot of significance for God's people. It's where they wandered for 40 years after the Exodus and, and where God uh, truly formed them into his people with his law. Um, John's out there preaching, once again, fulfilling Old Testament foreshadowing related to Jesus as the king. Matthew here again quotes Old Testament prophecy related to John that someone would come and, and prepare the way for the Lord and make his path straight. Um, he wears crazy clothes and eats crazy things out in the wilderness. Uh, some of that's just because he's kind of a wild man out in the wilderness. Some of that is an echo of Old Testament prophetic culture and the way some of those folks dressed. And he baptized people, which is an interesting topic in of itself because Christian baptism is in terms of faith in Jesus as the Savior really hadn't come about yet. This is sort of a precursor of that. But I'm not going to really talk about any of those things this afternoon. I want to talk about preparing the way of the Lord and making his paths straight. This was John's ministry. So far in Matthew, we've seen Jesus' birth, but we have not seen his public ministry begin. This came first, a preparation and I think it's appropriate for us to pause there because we are preparing to come back together in person in some limited and careful ways very soon. And I believe that this virus and this pandemic could be great occasion for revival in the church. 
Romans 8 teaches that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So we know that he is working this pandemic for the good of his people, that somehow he is going to use this together with everything else in our lives to make us more like Jesus, to make the church function better as the body of Christ. So I'm actually filled with anticipation to see what all God is bringing about through this. And I wonder if that's the way you're thinking about all this. Is, is that something that you desire to see a re revitalization and a revival come to the church through this? Uh, if, if so, it's appropriate for us to ask ourselves, how can we prepare for that just as individuals and as a church? And so this kind of speaks to me there where it talks about John preparing the way of the Lord and making his path straight. I want to be prepared for the Lord's work in my heart, and I want us to be prepared for his work in our church as we get ready to kind of end this phase of isolation and step into a time of being back together again. Let's be prepared. That language of making his path straight is what you would do if a king was coming into town, and, and this was ancient days and, and rural areas, you would go along the path and make sure it was straightened out, that all the weeds were, were uh, chopped down and that any deep ruts were filled in so that the king's cart was not going to fall apart on his way into town. It's that kind of idea. We want to prepare the way the same, the same way. It makes me think of our entryway at our house, at our kitchen. It's where we uh, take our shoes off on the way in and so we have this mountain of shoes that accumulates there and if we're gonna have company over we always go out there and clear away a lot of these shoes so that people can get in and out and not trip over themselves that's sort of what John's ministry provided in preparation for Jesus and it's something that I think we should pause and do right now in our own hearts prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight so what do we do to prepare the way of the Lord John's message that he proclaimed was pretty simple. It started with a simple action item, repent. It means to change our minds. It means a radical transformation of our thinking and our actions. It's a fundamental turning that's uh, common in Christian lingo. We, we know that term, but it's not just what you do to enter into Christianity. It's what you do daily as a Christian. So if we want to prepare ourselves for the Lord and what he might do through this pandemic and as we come back together, that's the place to start is repentance. When is the last time the Holy Spirit convicted you of a specific sin and enabled you to turn away from it and to change? When is the last time you confessed your sin to God and those against whom you've sinned? When's the last time God's word revealed to you some specific way that you needed to turn your life back toward Christ in obedience? I want to invite you, as we prepare to come back together in a couple of weeks, to ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart and reveal to you any sin that you need to repent of and turn away from. He will reveal it to you, and He will enable you to repent. And I want to encourage you to be in God's word because that is the mirror that he holds up to show us what is wrong and where we need to repent. Now, what I'm not talking about is self-absorbed introspection. I'm not inviting you to uh, turn inward and deeply think about yourself a lot. That's not what repentance looks like. Uh, I'm also... I also want to warn you against Satan's accusations because we do have an accuser who wants to accuse us and make us feel just generally guilty and generally ashamed. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. That's not how conviction works. And that's not how repentance works. The Holy Spirit, armed with God's word, will convict you of specific sin if you have specific sin in your life and enable you to repent and turn from that in specific ways. He's not just going to blanket you with a vague sense of guilt and shame. He's going to make you deeply uncomfortable with something specific in your life that needs to change. And he'll enable you to turn and repent from it. And this is for all of us. This is for me too. We all sin. No, nobody is perfect apart from Jesus Christ. Um, you have sin in your life. I have sin in my life. That's just a biblical truth. Now's a chance for us to repent in preparation for the Lord. Why should we do this? 
John's logic is pretty simple. Repent for because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what he says in verse 2 there. The reason to repent is because God's rule is in place now. Jesus came as the king, which means that the the kingly rule is in effect through Jesus. Uh, as one commentary put it, the inbreaking of the promised rule of God has come about through Jesus. So there's this now or never tone in John's preaching and in his ministry. The kingdom is here. King Jesus is here. He came, he lived, he fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies of the king. He died for us uh, as uh, an awesome king that gives up his life for his subjects. He arose in resurrection and ascended into heaven, and he is alive and ruling on the throne right now. And he will return one day and make that reign and rule comprehensive. And in that day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord we as Christians bow our knees and confess with our tongues that he is the Lord now before he returns in power and glory. And we live under his kingly authority and rule now. And what that looks like is just practical day-to-day -day obedience to his word and his commands. He's given us a lot of direction as our king. We don't float through our lives by instinct we live lives of purpose and meaning and guidance based on what Jesus, our King, has commanded in his word. So think about Jesus' soon return. He's coming back. Will that be an abrupt end to your whole way of life? Or will that be the fulfillment of your way of life? In other words, are you living right now under your own personal kingdom, and everything's maybe going great or maybe going bad, but that's what you're after. You're trying to establish your own personal kingdom. You're living by your rules. And when Jesus returns, that's going to put an abrupt stop to that. Or are you living by Jesus's ways and rules? Are you living by his kingly commands so that when he returns, that's just going to be the fulfillment of the trajectory of your life and not an abrupt interruption to your way of life? If we want to be prepared for God to do great things in our lives and our church through these extraordinary circumstances, this is a great place to start. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, I want to pray for us, and then I'm going to pivot a little bit and talk about our plan for coming back together. But uh, throughout the rest of our time together now, and always I'm available to you if there's anything that I can do to help you in this process of repentance and preparation for God's kingdom. But let me pray for us. And then we'll talk about our plan for coming back together. Father, thank you so much for your word and the clear, simple directives you've given us to repent, to turn from sin and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, to turn from our own little kingdoms and embrace your kingdom, your true rule over us in this world. Would you show each and every one of us how to do that? I invite you. You, Holy Spirit, to search our hearts and reveal sin that may be in there lurking, that we may be justifying or distracting ourselves from or maybe just unaware of. Would you please convict us of our sin and enable us to repent? But we acknowledge that you are the true king, and we ask for your help to live as your royal subjects, as your citizens of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you for praying with me. I'm just going to scroll back through and acknowledge some comments here. Hey there to Elvin. Um, let's see. Meredith says in response to scripture yesterday, she had been praying for humility and then totally botched something at work. And uh, yeah, Dawn looks like that's something Dawn was involved, involved in there. Sue Brooks is watching. Uh, uh, Rebecca Chastain, good to see you. Yes, the Broadways have a shoe problem. All right. Okay, so we're all settled in here. We've had our daily devotion, and I, I don't want to minimize that or distract from that by turning now to our plan for coming back together, but I am eager to share with you where the board landed last night. This was our second meeting this month to pray and discuss this together, and uh, I'll share with you where we landed. It's been about 12 weeks since we last gathered in person. I think this Sunday will be our 12th Sunday apart from each other. 
we decided to stop meeting for scriptural reasons. We know that in the book of Proverbs, we are taught that uh, God's people, if they want to be wise, they listen to good advice. And so we wanted to be open to the advice of the medical community, and uh, we took their recommendations really seriously. We know that Jesus commands us to love our neighbor as ourself, and so we did not want to be part of the problem and fuel the pandemic by spreading it through close quarter gatherings inside in the same um, circulating air and then going out and spreading the virus further and overwhelming the medical um, facilities. And we know that Romans 13 teaches us to be subject to our governing authorities insofar as we can, unless it contradicts God directly. So we felt that we could submit to the governing authorities and move our ministries from the fellowship of the uh, sanctuary to the internet temporarily in order to um, minimize the impact of the virus. So that's what we've been doing. During our time apart, though, I think that we have felt the effects of this isolation from one another. We know that we need in-person fellowship to thrive as Christians. That's something that has become really important to us as a church through our study of Scripture. We know our relationships as a church family are very important. Uh, so though the medical community remains wary, we are now free to come back together uh, in terms of the government's recommendations, and we feel that we need to start doing that. We want to do it carefully and you know, thoughtfully. We don't just want to open wide the doors and come back together without consideration of the potential dangers. So all that being said, here are our plans for June. So this is to begin in June, and this is really just a plan for June. This does not necessarily indicate what we're going to do in July because we're going to be waiting and watching and seeing how things go. But starting in June, on Wednesdays at 6 p.m., starting the first Wednesday in June, which is June 3rd, We'll have in-person small groups for groups of up to 10, I'm sorry, up to 15 individuals. So these groups will meet here at the church outside, up to 15 individuals. Uh, you'll need to register online for these or get in touch with me and let me know that you would like to come so that we can cap those groups off at 15 individuals. These Wednesday meetings are going to be designed for more interaction together. So we can build each other up and encourage each other and pray together. And uh, we wanted a smaller number so we could still maintain some social distancing, but be close enough so that everybody could hear everybody in the group. I will lead these. I'll have a uh, scriptural devotion planned, and it'll be more interactive and responsive. It'll be more of a discussion of the scripture together. So that's going to be on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. starting in June. Sunday mornings starting June 7th, that's the, the first Sunday in June, at 9 a.m., we will have in-person worship services again. They, too, will be outside during the month of June. We're not going to limit the number of people who can come on Sunday mornings, but we do ask that you register for these. There will be an online form you can use, or you can get in touch with me directly to let me know that you plan to come, at least for the first couple of Sundays. That way, we can prepare the parking lot for where you should park and where we will meet, and then some indicators of where folks should sit so that we can maintain some social distancing there as well. Now, I've got several notes to share with you about these in-person gatherings, Wednesdays at 6, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., and I'm just going to kind of read through those. Again, all this is going to be put everywhere in writing pretty soon, including being mailed out to you. If you feel sick, especially if you have a fever or cough or you're sneezing a lot, you should stay home. Um, even if you feel comfortable coming out, you know it's not the virus. Uh, people around you may feel very uncomfortable with you coughing and sneezing beside them. Masks are encouraged. Uh, you'll need to bring your own chairs. We're, we're asking folks to bring their own camping chairs and things like that. Again, just to limit the potential spread of germs. Children will are absolutely encouraged to come to these gatherings, and they will remain with their parents during these times. Uh, the playground is going to remain closed for right now. They'll be offering baskets available for contributions if you want to give while you're here in person. The bathrooms will be available in the church, uh, but the gatherings are going to be limited to under an hour so that there's a less likelihood that you're going to need the restroom facilities. And then finally, if it rains, we're just going to cancel the gathering. We're not going to try to move it inside during June 
if it rains us out, then we'll, we just won't have those in-person gatherings that day. So that's our basic plan for how we can come together in person. We feel safely during the month of June. We can't uh, promise that no one will get sick during an in-person gathering in June. And we encourage you to use your own judgment and discretion as to whether you should come or not. Uh, in particular, if you are elderly or have pre-existing conditions that make you especially vulnerable to this virus and the, the most dangerous symptoms of the virus, then, then we totally encourage you to stay home if you would prefer and you feel that that's better. That's understandable. Uh, Meredith says, could we have a handful of sanitized metal or plastic chairs for people who don't have camping chairs? Sure. Yeah, and I had that in the back of my mind. If some of you forget or are unable to bring chairs, of course, we'll, we'll grab you some chairs that we can wipe down from inside and you can use those. Uh, but if at all possible, bring your own chairs. So knowing that many of you are not yet going to feel comfortable gathering in person, we're going to continue online ministries during June also. Here's what the online ministries are going to look like during the month of June. Let me flip over there to make sure I get it right. Uh, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., starting June 2nd, that's the first Tuesday in June, we're going to have Zoom small group meetings. So these will be virtual small group meetings where we can still interact. These will be for groups of up to five households, because if you get more than that on Zoom, it can get real confusing and hard to hear each other and understand each other. Wednesdays in June at 3 p.m., we'll do... Facebook Live devotions just like this. It's going to be identical to what you've been used to on Facebook for our devotions, but it's only going to be on Wednesday starting in June. Sundays at 11, starting June 7th, we'll have Facebook Live sermons exactly like we've been doing. Uh, so that's going to be identical to what you've been experiencing on Facebook Live at 11. I am planning to use the same scriptures Wednesdays at 3 online and Wednesdays at 6 during those small groups. And I'm planning to use the same scriptures here in person on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. As well as Sundays at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live. That way we can all still be somewhat on the same page in terms of what God is speaking to us through the scriptures. Um, the hope is that if everything goes well with this approach during June, we may be able to begin moving into the sanctuary in July. But we don't know yet. Uh, we're nobody sure yet how things are going to go now that everything is opening up. Um, one reason why we're emphasizing uh, being outside is that scientifically you're most prone to catch the virus if you're in the same indoor space with the same air supply for a long time. Uh, it's it's that that's when you're most likely to catch it. So if we can be outside, which is the maximum ventilation possible. And for a briefer amount of time, under an hour, we feel like that's a pretty safe situation. Um, Meredith says she's going to throw together some infographics for all this. That would be awesome, Meredith. I wish you would do that. Uh, I've given an outline of this to Isaac, so we're getting it put on the website, and we'll have it on social media. And I'm writing a letter that contains all these details. It's going to be mailed to you as well. Um, so I don't expect you to remember it just from hearing it, but I wanted to give you just a basic summary of what we're planning on doing in June. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have now. And I'll probably do a separate Facebook Live just to talk about this and answer questions if you have any. But I'm eager to get back together. We, we need to come together to encourage each other. Uh, as Hebrews 10 says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So I'm eager to get back together. Our, our focus during these times is going to be mutual encouragement, uh, recentering ourselves in our faith and allegiance to Christ together, encouraging each other as the Holy Spirit gives you words of encouragement and testimony and praise and uh, things of that nature, praying together and interceding for people together and receiving and responding to God's word together. Those are the essentials. Those are the things we have to do, we need to do. Uh, one question I anticipate is what about singing and music? Uh, I hope that we can incorporate some congregational singing during these times, but uh, it's not my first priority. I think we can probably figure that out with some familiar songs just so we won't have to pass out music or hymn books. 
Uh, our, my first priority, though, is just keeping centered on Christ, encouraging each other, praying together, and receiving and responding to the Word together. So we're definitely definitely going to do those things together. So, so there you have it. Um, I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss any questions or comments I need to respond to. Martha said, uh, God works in ways we don't think of praying for something, and he will respond in ways we may not want but need. Yes, that is true, and uh, back on the topic of repentance, I know that's not always fun and comfortable, but it's, it's essential for us. So uh, be prayerfully considering your involvement in these gatherings. If you should come or if you should refrain in order to stay safe, uh, either option is valid. I don't want you to feel less spiritual if you feel that right now is not the time for you to come back in person. That's an understandable conclusion for you to come to. And I don't want you to judge each other if people come to different conclusions. Uh, we have a lot of grace and a lot of freedom and a lot of room to make these decisions together. And we just need to give each other space to decide what's going to be the wisest course of action. When we do come together in all these gatherings, I hope that you'll be prepared to fully participate and uh, be open to the Holy Spirit giving you a word to share with the church that might be really meaningful and upbuilding to them. So, so be prayerfully prepared for these gatherings when we do start coming back together. But that's it for right now. Be looking for a lot more communication about all this coming really soon. Uh, but I hope you have a good rest of your Wednesday and stay dry.